And speaking of the word deplorable, some conservatives of late seem on the verge of calling each other that and worse. The issue, of course, is Donald Trump's candidacy. There is real division. Joining me to discuss that is one of the best-known conservatives in the land, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich. So, Mr. Speaker, I see Sean Hannity, longtime veteran conservative. I see uh, Jonah Goldberg of National Review, similarly conservative, at each other's throats over the Trump candidacy. It's, it's everywhere. Uh, when all of this is over, win or lose for Trump, does that movement that we knew and seemed to be pretty coherent uh, a couple of years ago come back together? Probably not. I think that you, you're seeing a genuine evolution into a new set of issues, a new set of principles. Um, what are they? Well, I, th I think one of them is putting America first. I mean, a very relentless, ruthless attitude that says, you know, show me a, a trade deal. I want to see what's in it for America. Show me a defense agreement like NATO where we currently spend 72 percent of the money and a lot of the European countries spend nothing. And I want to find out how I fix it. Well, if you belong to the older guard of conservatism, where we were the biggest country, the richest country, we could afford to spend a lot of resources doing things, you find Trump offensive on all sorts of fronts. Uh, you don't particularly like his style. I mean, <clears throat> you know, if you're some intellectual who's used to sitting around drinking your sherry and talking in reasonable Wait a minute, terms. Mr. Speaker, we now know that in just a little while we'll hear it. Mr. Trump will make a speech in which he calls for a new entitlement or two. Right. This is it. You just mentioned that we don't have the kind of money we used to have. We're, right. The nation is very deep in debt. Um, the, the way he, we'll hear from him, but you know, it, it's not at all clear exactly how well he'll be able to pay for this. Is that conservative? Well, I think, it's, first of all, what he's going to speak about is very pro-family. I get very, that. Very, it's very pro-raising children. It's also, doesn't it also sound like something a Democrat would offer? Well, actually, I helped work on, on child care projects under Ronald Reagan in 1987-88. Help, I helped pass it in 1987-88. Well, then why do we need it now? Because you need a larger credit, uh, particularly for the working poor. And I think it's a very serious effort. And look. He represents the same tradition of conservatism as Churchill and Thatcher in Great Britain. Thatcher was not somebody who walked in there and said, let's wipe out everything. She did what she was very tough, and then she privatized things like the telephone system. But she also understood that there's a, there's a social... So, there's, what, so what happens? And, uh, so this ends, Trump either wins or loses. Your view is that everything is... That my, a lot my, of things my view is that the world has changed dramatically. And that you are going to see a permanent upsurge against Washington government. You're going to see a permanent rebellious attitude. I mean, this whole uh, turning deplorables around into the opposite is, is something which a lot of traditional intellectual Republicans don't understand, wouldn't be comfortable with. Uh, they would say, gee, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't, they, they, frankly, some of these guys think that the deplorables are real. Well, I, I, I get all that, but... Uh, you as a conservative, are you fine with uh, what, uh, what Donald Trump says about Vladimir Putin, for example? Well, he hasn't looked in his eyes and seen his soul. That was George W. Bush. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Uh, he hasn't said he was our uh, best ally on 9-11. On that was Andy Card. Uh, he hasn't Mr. tried to... Mr. Speaker, are you comfortable <laughs> with what Mr. Trump is saying about it? I think Mr. I'm not particularly bothered by what Mr. Trump is saying. I think what Mr. Trump is saying on balance is... Putin exists. Putin is real. Using so strong language with a weak policy, which is the Obama-Clinton model, doesn't work. So if Mr. Trump were to lose, will it be his agenda or the, cons or the traditional conservative agenda that puts the GOP back on his feet? I think if Trump were to lose, and I don't think he will, but if he were to lose, I think you'd see a real fight and a real struggle. And as, as Carl just said, one of the people who is running one of the best races in the country is Rob Portman. I think you'd see a new generation with new ideas. I mean, look at what Rob Portman's doing on the opioid uh, crisis. And you can say, gee, that's government. Well, you know, more people die today from opioid addiction than die from auto wrecks. So maybe you need some activism on these kind of issues. Mr. Trump is lucky to have you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Thank you very much. As